there and welcome back to Dicoscopy TV. Once again in the studio with us is René Philippe. René, welcome back to the studio. Thank you, Monica. Oh, nice seeing you back in Geneva. And same to, same to you. Now, we're going to be talking a little bit more about your, you know, your specialist subject, about, about tax. First of all, perhaps you can tell us, what are tax treaties? What do we mean when we, we hear those words? Okay, tax treaty, it's actually terms which encompass uh, two uh, different things. First, you have what we call double tax avoidance agreement, which are uh, agreement between two countries to avoid that the same income is taxed in both countries. Uh, originally, historically, those agreements do not contain uh, what we call uh, tax information uh, clauses. Uh, <coughs> for example, France still has a 50 double tax agreement which actually do not have uh, such a clause, but now it's changing. Then you have what we call a uh, tax information exchange agreement, which are uh, agreements which sole purpose is for a country to request and obtain uh, uh, information in a tax case, whether they are tax uh, criminal case, uh, administrative case or civil case. Okay, now obviously Switzerland is seen as a bit of a tax haven, but do all tax havens have these, um, the DTAs and the, the tax information exchange agreement? Do they all, all have those? Alors, up to 2008, none of them had said agreement, but then we had the financial crisis and we have uh, the J20 which put uh, tax havens under notice. Either you signed at least 12 uh, tax treaties, either you are grey or black listed. And for those countries, being black or grey listed would have been a problem for, the for their financial institution. So what happened first, it was a little bit like a joke, where tax havens signing uh, tax information agreement between themselves. But then uh, it has become more serious. For example, Panama, which was very reluctant, has signed 24 tax treaties in like two, three years. France was able to sign 29 uh, tax information exchange, exchange agreement with uh, tax haven in two years only. So overall now you have uh, in the world, you have 700 tax information exchange agreement. Uh, yes, you still have 200 which are between tax haven, but still it's a success. It certainly sounds it, but what information is covered by these different exchanges? Alors, actually, tax information exchange agreement are very well uh, conceived. Uh, basically, uh, you can ask information uh, about a case, even if the case is not a criminal offence in the country uh, which receives the request. You can uh, request information even if those information are covered by bank secrecy in this country. Then, tax information agreement, the big things, is that they uh, permit to unravel the whole ownership chain. You know, uh, in a lot of offshore countries, we are using foundation, companies, uh, nominee director, but actually with a tax information agreement, you can obtain information about all those persons, including beneficiaries of trust. So it's well conceived. Indeed. Now, you said that you can request the information even if it's not criminal. How do these requests work? Hello, actually, that's where uh, we are a little bit lucky because uh, actually filing a tax information exchange agreement is something which is quite complex. The tax authority of the country requesting the information will have motivate an 18 point request. And it's not only stating, it's also mo motivating and explaining. Firstly, you have to state that uh, the law of the legal basis, then you have uh, to state that uh, uh, tax authority in the country has done everything it could to get the information. Then you have to state that uh, the <coughs> it's uh, authorized by the law of your country to request that information and so on and so on. It's quite difficult to prepare those requests. To your mind, René, do these actual provisions work out in reality? Alors, it could work, but fortunately, uh, tax information ex exchange agreement do not provide for automatic exchange of information. Secondly, while tax haven have signed those kind of agreement, they are not very enthusiastic as to provide the information. Uh, thirdly, uh, you cannot use those kind of agreement for what we call fishing expedition. 
And finally, to file those kind of requests of information takes time and manpower, and not all tax authorities can do this. Just to give an example, over a four years period, the US, which is one of the countries which is the most aggressive in this matter, they have only filed 894 such requests. Lastly, the biggest success by Western tax authorities, they don't come from tax information agreement, they come from stolen data. The case in France about HSBC Swiss stolen data. Uh, the German lenders which are buying, uh, which are buying uh, stolen data. Uh, the case from Credit Suisse and UBS, it was a whistleblower. So all those cases has nothing to do with tax information exchange agreement. Okay. Now, it sounds a little bit, sometimes it can be confusing, confusing um, and where there's confusion, there can be concern. If you have a bank account that has, um, you know, an, one of these agreements uh, with your country of residence, should you be concerned? Hello, actually, that's the thing I'm killing myself to explain for five years. It's never safe to evade tax. Um, now, obviously, this legislation is changing, you know, ever updating. So what's next, would you say? Uh, the biggest danger is uh, FACTA, okay, and automatic exchange of information. But this will be for the next interview. <laughs> okay, indeed. Well, there's something to look forward to in itself. But for now, Rennie, thank you so much for coming in and sharing your insights with us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for inviting me again, Monica. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Okay, well, that's all from Renee and myself for the moment. Next time, we will be discussing FACTA. So make sure you click back for that. For now, though, it's goodbye. <laughs>